Mike Taylor, I'm the creative technician at Polymaker and today I'm going to show you how to uh, print and assemble an eye mechanism uh, animatronic eye rig. So just to explain the rig we have there a little bit, it's um, a two servo rig and we have uh, an X servo and a Y servo. So our X servo at the front is doing our, our left and right movement. And in the back we have our Y servo, which is doing our, our up and down. And then opposing each servo, or sort of here, to synchronise uh, everything together, we have two pivots. One here and here, this is our, our Y pivot at the back and our X pivot here. Uh, and these are connected by a con rod at the back, so what this does is, you know, these are in, um, all in relation to the eyes. So whenever this one moves, you know, it pushes the pivot here and, uh, and we get movement on the other side. So it really synchronizes everything together and then, you know, once you get all the movement going, you can really look in, in, in any direction. So I want to talk a little bit about the servos themselves. These are our 3.2 kilogram Futaba S3003 servos. Um, they're, they're quite cheap actually and they come with a little range of, of arms. Um, so what, what we had to do here is that this, the movement you get from this, this arm is about 90 degrees from the servo. You know, it'll clock round about 90 degrees. Um, so the actual range of movement you get is, is quite small. So to extend that um, for the iMac, I've designed this piece that just sits on top of the servo. Um, so you will notice there is a small little lip, a little ring around here. Um, so you, you want to just um, trim that off, you know, really easily, just with a knife. You can just sort of run that around. And then this piece is going to sit really flat against the, uh, against the new printed part that we've designed. And it will enable you to uh, screw, screw it down nice and tight and really secure the whole system. So once you just run a knife around there, you know, that sits flat now. And then this piece here will just lock in really nicely here. So then when that's on the actual servo, our range of movement is much larger. So the further away from the pivot point you are, uh, the more range of movement you've got. Uh, so I think we've gone for um, 33 millimetres here, which works perfectly for the iMac. So for the eyes, I actually did them all on a single extrusion. And I thought it would be a good idea to uh, layer the colours through the print. So we started off with uh, just a white poly max, uh, so then you can get the good detail at the bottom. And then about 80% about of the way through the print, I switched to a poly plus uh, translucent blue. Really nice deep blue colour. And then literally the, the last sort of four or five layers are uh, poly matte. Uh, and the PLA just it adheres to itself. It, it, it's great for that. And, uh, and you get this nice effect with the, uh, the white, the blue and the black. Um, so, you know, just by changing your filament along the way, just a quick pause, change filament, you can actually create some, some cool effects and some, and some lifelike eyes, all on a single extrusion. So here we have uh, one of the earlier designs of the board, and it's much more of a skeleton board, this one. Uh, let me show you here. So what I've done is I've cut out uh, all the unnecessary parts of plastic that I thought um, you know, will in it increase the printing time, sorry, decrease the printing time and uh, you know, make it much more efficient and you'll use less plastic uh, to print it. The, the problem was is, as, as the servos are moving, you're actually getting a lot of flex in the board and what, this, what that's doing is it's sapping the energy from the servos. So the servos is, is, is bending the board up. This is actually um, Polymax, uh, one of our strongest materials. It's absolutely brilliant, it prints fantastically. One of my favourite materials. But it turns out it's not actually the best, uh, best filament for this application. What we need is stiffness. Um, so what we've done here with the new board is print it in whole with 30% uh, infill and uh, it's in poly plus. Well, poly plus is much stiffer material and uh, you know, the results you get uh, you know, uh, are way better than with the flexible board. So the, the servo motors are not, not draining their power, you know, flexing the board, you know, all the power is being directed straight to the eyes. Also, what I've done here is, we've got one X and one uh, Y. So initially I thought, you know, 
we'll just push it on one side of the eye, but, but what tends to happen is the, the drag from the uh, opposing uh, Conrad and Coupling tends to um, affect the eyes, but especially on the up and down, so they, they tend to wander away. They're not quite moving as straight as they would because there's more friction on, on this side and this side's free. So with the new design, what we have is a much more even system. So the friction is, uh, is, is evened out and then uh, this uh, pivot is linked on both sides. It's pushing and pulling and then obviously the conrod is transferring that energy to the, to the other side. Uh, and then with the up and down, because there's, there's two on each side, it's balanced now. So you're getting a much more, um, a much more fluid movement and a much more accurate eye mech. So for all the uh, non-printed parts, um, I just want to talk through the electronics quickly here. Here we just have uh, a basic um, transformer. Uh, this is a 220 to um, 5 volts transformer and it's a 2 amp. So this is perfect. You can also have a battery. They're very uh, readily available and they all come with um, these sort of, this free pin connector. Uh, this is very common in the RC uh, remote control world. You can find them everywhere online. So a 5 volt battery, or if you don't want to keep charging up your battery, pick up a transformer to make sure it's 5 volts. And then we have here our transmitter. So this is the transmitter. This is what speaks to the remote control. So at the top here we have to start battery line in. And then here you just plug in your servo. So you pick which, which channel you want to, want to plug into. I'm going to go for channel 1 and 2. And then the last thing you need electronically is the, uh, the RC itself, you know, the remote control. And then once that's plugged in, oh, I put my battery in the wrong one. There we go. You should be on your way. So the secret behind this whole mech is really this um, coupling piece we have here. This is uh, the only polyflex piece that uh, is, features on the iMac rig. Uh, and, it, and it really uh, enables the range of movement. See, as the servos pull and, and pull left and right, we need this flexibility here. So then when you bring the Y into it, that's, that's just X, when you bring the Y in as well, it needs to flex in, in more than one direction. So normally, you know, you could use like a hinge system like we have here, we have a hinge, a bolt going through, and this is very good for, for one directional movement. As soon as you have two directions at the same time, it makes things a lot more complicated. So this polyflex part is really the most, um, is really most challenging part to design and print. Uh, so we went through a few iterations and, you know, with polyflex, the great thing about it is you can change the flexibility by changing the infill. So what I started off with, well, I, I knew the basic design I wanted to do. So, uh, you know, it's got this, this almost like an accordion. So we've got great flexibility. And this is one of the first ones I did. Uh, printed a very low infill. The, the problem is it was it's not stiff enough. You see how it's, it's compressing, a bit like a, an accordion. So as the uh, Conrod's trying to push the eye, you know, the actual coupling itself is folding in on itself and uh, it's not good enough. So I thought, okay, let's increase the infill. And then we went to, uh, I think, a 20% infill. So the problem is here, you know, it's definitely not compressing anymore. But we just don't have the flexibility that we did from the lower infill. So the next thing to do was, was go back and actually look at the design. Um, what, what I did was um, add an internal shell inside, inside the, the coupling. There's another a smaller version, almost like a scaled down, like an offset version of the, the outside perimeter. Uh, and what that does is it means you can have very low infill, such as this white one here. But it's also, so you get great flexibility, but also, you know, the stiffness is still there. You can still do the pushing and pulling mo uh, motions uh, that the iMac needs, but, but still have that great flexibility in every direction. So for this rig, we really want to keep the friction as, as low as possible to, to get the most out of the servo motor. So these are the uh, Futaba S3003 servos, and they say they can pull around three... 3.2 kilograms. I don't know how true that is, but to get the most out of the eye make, you really want to cut down on the friction. So all these parts want to be really like moving really, really freely. And, and to do that, to transfer the energy from, from the servo over here to, to, to make both eyes move in sync, uh, I've used this pivot part. So what I've done here is I've taken a, uh, just a, a normal 13mm bearing 
And uh, with the eyes before, you know how you, you pause along the way and uh, you know you can change filaments. Instead of changing filaments, I just paused. And uh, in the design, I, I allowed a cavity for, for the bearing. Uh, and then pause when the print's you know, almost at the top, pop the bearing in, and then resume the print. And then what, what you end up is quite a nice, nice piece. You know, with the bearing, it's all one part, and you get a real, real free-moving, uh, low-friction part, which makes the whole system much more efficient. A little bit of WD-40 just behind the eyes. Just to grease up those uh, ball and socket joints, that will help them running uh, uh, nice and smoothly. And there we have it. One complete iMac. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, all the files will be available to download from our Thingiverse um, polymaker underscore three D at Thingiverse.com. Uh, they'll be available. Um, so if you've got any questions, just send them through or email me. Um, you can get me through uh, the, the website. It's Luke.Taylor at polymaker.com. Any questions concerning printing or finishing post-processing, just let me know, get in touch and I'll get back to you. Cheers guys.